So today, we are solving algebra equations using the distributive property, but also involve fractions. All right, and I'm going to actually show you two different ways to solve this equation because it depends on what kind of scenario you, ha you have that one method might work better than the other. All right, so we've got 1 fourth times, in parentheses, 3x plus 4, equals 5 sixth times, in parentheses, 2x minus 1. So we know with the distributive property, we're going to multiply this 1 fourth times every single item in the parentheses. And it might help to put this over 1 and this over 1, because when we multiply fractions, we have to do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So 1 times 3 is 3. 4 times 1 is 4. So this is 3 fourths x plus 1 fourth times 4 over 1. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. All right, which is one whole, but let's keep it in that form for now. On the other side, we're going to multiply everything in parentheses by 5 sixths. And again, I'm going to put these over 1 because we're multiplying them by a fraction. So 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 1 is 6. x minus 5 times 1 is 5. And 6 times 1 is 6. All right. So I've used my distributive property. Now there's no more parentheses. Now I can start solving this. Now if you notice, I've got x's on both sides, so I'm going to need a common denominator here. Okay, And looking at my denominators, 4, 4, 6, 6, I think 12 is going to be the easiest one to work with. And we're going to have to combine our x's. We're also going to have to combine our regular numbers, so we're going to have to make sure these have common denominators as well. So luckily, in this case, they're all 4's and 6's, so I'm going to change them all to 12's. All right, so 3 fourths is 9 twelfths. 4 fourths is 12 twelfths, because I'm just multiplying the top and bottom by 3. On the other side, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 to get 12 so this is 20 twelfths x minus. And then 5 6, multiply the top and bottom by 2, that's 10 twelfths. All right, so now this is going to be a lot easier to solve. Okay, so let's do this. I've got x's on both sides. I'm going to subtract 20 twelfths on both sides. You could also subtract uh, 9 twelfths from both sides if you wanted to. I'm just going to keep the x on the left side. When I do this, these undo each other. I get negative 11 twelfths x over here. The tw plus 12 twelfths just drops down. My equals drops down. And then this negative 10 twelfths is going to drop down as well. Notice that minus sign's attached, so it's staying with the 10 twelfths. Okay, now, let's solve for x. So we've got to undo everything around x, so I'm going to subtract 12 twelfths from both sides. Uh, whoops, there we go. All right, now, when I do that, these undo each other, I get negative 11 twelfths x drops down, equals drops down, and negative 10 twelfths minus 12 twelfths is negative 22 twelfths, which can be reduced, but eh, we'll just keep going with it. All right, now, last step, let's undo this negative 11 twelfths. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, and the reciprocal of negative 11 twelfths is negative 12 elevenths. I'm just flipping it upside down, and notice, it's still negative. Okay, we're not changing sides, we're just flipping it upside down. And I'll do the same to the other side. All right, so when I do this, these two fractions undo each other to make one whole x equals drops down. On this other side, now we can just multiply this out. We can use a fraction, uh, we can use a calculator if we want to do this. You can also just do some multiplication in your head. You know a negative times a negative is a positive. I know 12 on the bottom and 12 on the top will cancel out. And 22 on top and 11 on the bottom. 11 goes into them twice. This whole thing's just going to be positive too. And if you're not sure, again, you can always use a calculator, right? Negative 22 over 12 times negative 12 over 11. 2. All right. And that is our answer. Okay? So the key to this method was making sure you use the distributive property, and then you combine like terms, and you can solve it. All right, now I'm going to show you a different method which will eliminate all the fractions on the very first step. And then you don't have to deal with fractions for the rest of the problem, which in this case would have saved us a lot of fraction work. All right, so here's what we're going to do. On this second method, 
I'm going to multiply both sides by the common denominator of the fraction. So the fractions are, have 4 and 6 as your denominator. So my common denominator is going to be 12, which we already knew from the last problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. All right. So when I do that, what happens? Now, you're probably thinking, oh, you have to distribute the 12 to everything in parentheses. Not really, actually. Because remember, this 1 fourth is already being distributed to everything in parentheses. So if we multiply the 12 times the 1 fourth, it will automatically be distributed to all the things in parentheses next. So really, all I have to do is multiply this 12 times 1 fourth. All right, 12 over 1 times 1 over 4. 12 times 1 is 12. 1 times 4 is 4. This becomes 12 fourths times 3x plus 4. And then just like on the left side, on the right side, if we just multiply this 12 times the 5 sixths, we know the 12 will be multiplied by everything on this side because all of it's going to be distributed in the parentheses too. So I'm just going to multiply 5 six times 12. 5 times 12 is 60. 6 times 1 is 6 times, oops, 2x minus 1. All right? Now, at first you're thinking, but that didn't eliminate the fractions. But if you look carefully, it did. Because 12 divided by 4 is just 3. So this whole side simplifies to 3 times 3x plus 4. And on the other side, this also simplifies to a whole number. 60 divided by 6 is just 10. And now, this is a much easier equation to solve. Okay, So multiplying that uh, initial equation by your common denominator will always get to a point where it eliminates all the fractions and makes everything whole numbers. All right. So now let's just go through and solve this. Distributed property. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times 4 is 12. On the other side, distribute that 10. 10 times 2x is 20x. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. Now, I've got x's on both sides. I'm going to subtract off all the x's off one side. When I do that, these undo each other. I've got negative 11x plus 12 is equal to, and over here, just negative 10 is left. Subtract 12 from both sides. I end up getting negative 11x equals negative 22. And then my last step, divide both sides by negative 11. And all that's going to be left is x. On the other side, negative divided by negative is positive 2. There you go. So two different ways to solve the exact same problem. But some important differences. One is, uh, the first method, we didn't undo the fraction until the very last step. So we're doing fraction work throughout the entire problem. In the second method, we eliminate the fractions right from the beginning, so we don't have to deal with fractions at all. However, the second method's a little complicated at the, the beginning to kind of understand why we're not multiplying everything in parentheses by 12. And remember, we're not multiplying everything in parentheses by 12, just the outside number, because that outside number is already going to be multiplying everything in parentheses. So it's an unnecessary step because we'd be doing it twice. All right. Now, either of these methods will work for your problems. So just pick the method that works best for you, the one that you understand best and the one that um, you can handle the best. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.